Would you like the intro? We started. Yeah, we've started. This could be the right. this could be the intro. <laughs> Great intro. Welcome Great intro. to another week of the Pokeballs podcast. My name is Lee. I'm joined by my brilliant co-host as always, Scott. How are you doing, mate? Brilliant. Doing okay? I'm doing very good, thank you. How are brilliant. you? Brilliant. Another objective word to describe <laughs> your brilliance. Stop. <laughs> it's good to be back, mate. No, it's, it's really good, to be, good to be back. Another um eventful week, shall we say? Well, we could say that, mate. It's been something. It's one polite way of saying of saying it. Very polite. Very polite. I would say it's been a bit of a, a whirlwind to say the least. I mean, I, I even messaged you over the weekend and I said that from Saturday morning, how I felt Saturday morning, I felt like I'd actually been trolled by Pokemon, like with everything that had been going on because it just felt so like, I just felt gaslighted about all these announcements and then everything else that just seemed to go belly up over the, the next few hours since the announcement of Pokemon Home. Hmm. So should we just should we just break down? Let's just dive straight into it. And, yeah, let's and, you do know. it. Do you want me to uh, timeline uh, it for us? Well, I mean, I'll I'll bring it up and then we can go from there. So cool. Obviously, Look, you lead the way. <laughs> on the eighteenth, which was when was the eighteenth? The eighteenth was Thursday. On Thursday, so obviously, sorry, before that, we had the planned terror raid spotlight event, which was going to take place. On Friday, across this weekend, it was for the Great Tusk um, and Iron Treads. Iron Treads, that's it. <laughs> um, and Chestnut coming back. And the Chestnut coming back. Um, yeah. Everything was fine. And then on Thursday, they go, Oh, Pokemon Home's coming out next Wednesday. And everyone's like, Yes, finally. Um, and we got this tweet of Pokemon being like, Starting from uh, the 24th of May, you'll be able to get a special Pokemon when you link Pokemon Home with your Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. You'll be able to get uh, Sprigatito, Fukuoka, and Quaxley with their hidden abilities as mystery gifts on the mobile versions of Pokemon <laughs> Home. And everyone was like, yeah, yeah. And Finally, then, it's here. And then Friday rocks up, or Thursday night, should we say. Thursday and, night, yes. And then uh, why don't you go for the events of that? Because you were trying to make videos to post on Thursday okay, night. So, so, yes, Thursday night happens. Uh, it's 1 a.m. for me, uh, British Standard Time, so midnight UTC time, because we're... British summertime at the minute. Anyway, it doesn't matter. The events go live, and I put out the chestnut video. So for um, beating the chestnut, I had a, a new build that I'd done for that and went over everything else that we'd kind of covered to help players solo this, this raid. If you hadn't got it, easy to get. And if you wanted to farm it for the good item drops, which it has, then you can use any of the Pokemon that it did. So I put that video up, great. And then I started on the Great Tusks Iron Treads video. Um had some really unique builds for that uh, recorded that edited the video and it for this time it's getting on for around 2 30. i had no trouble with the great tusks or iron treads raids i did two great tusks and i did one iron treads online because i was playing on scarlet finished the edit uploaded it did the thumbnail all that really happy and i'm like great i can go to bed now i've got work i've got to get up at like half five so i'm gonna get a few hours sleep this is good right and then as soon as I'd uploaded the Great Tusks Iron Treads video, I started to get these messages of people saying the the games are crashing when they're going into the raids. Is there something wrong? And there's this weird non-item that's appearing in the rewards. And I was like, what? I haven't had any of these issues. I've even been online. So I'm like, what is going on? Go on Twitter, have a look. More people are having these issues. So I'm like, okay, let's just see. I'm going to go into one raid and just test it out. And I go into one raid beat a great tusk in my game and lo and behold in the rewards screen when I, after i beat it there's this item that says none and i'm like ah oh, i've got it i wonder if it's going to crash my game so i come out of the raid into the overworld and yeah lo and behold my game crashes and i hadn't saved anything before that point like for the whole night so i lost like all of the raids that i'd been doing for the chestnut and everything like that so it was just like kind of annoying 
So I proceed to make a video about this non-item and saying that there's an issue with the raids. Make sure you're aware. It doesn't seem to be happening every time you go into a raid, but it is something to be aware of because it is crashing games and it probably won't have any effect on the game other than you just losing and being put back to where your last save point was. Did that video. So this time it's like half three in the morning by the time I get that up. It's a short video anyway. Then I realize... There's some people saying that they can't find the raids, and I'm like, huh, have they actually taken it down? And I'm like, don't say this. This new video update is already uploaded. So I get my Switch, and I'm like, okay, I'm going to connect to the internet, connect to the internet, and lo and behold, they've taken the raids down, but they haven't announced anything at this point. The raids are just gone, mate, right? So I'm like... This is so annoying. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to put a community post out just saying that it looks like they've taken the raids down and I'm going to come back to this in the morning and have taken all the other videos down because they're irrelevant right now. There's no raids happening and we'll, I'll sort something out in the morning. So I go to bed at this point. It's like 4 a.m. and I'm like, this is not good. So I get up in the morning um, I check and like an hour after I went to bed, Pokemon put out a tweet. I think it was Play Pokemon saying there was issues with the raid and they've taken it down and it's not coming back. It's cancelled. So then I do the video on that. So I'm like, okay, that's cancelled. And then, and then it gets more spicy, mate, after that. Because about two hours after that video, we get news from Pokemon once again saying that... The news about Pokemon Home, the day that they'd mentioned, the 24th, for it being released for compatibility with Scarlet and Violet, was actually miscommunicated, and that won't be the date. After they'd announced it would have been the date that players would be getting Pokemon Home for Scarlet and Violet. So that's where the icing on the cake kind of came in, and you're thinking, and I was at that point, I was like... What is going? What is literally going on at the Pokemon company? And it all stemmed from a Japanese, uh, the Japanese Twitter page. Um, they put tweets out that were stating that it was miscommunicated to other regions in the world, and that a date hadn't been set yet, but it would be coming soon. Um, so they did apologize for it, and then that got fed through to the the Play Pokemon and official Pokemon Twitter pages. And that's where we are, mate. That is where we are. But that's my timeline alongside it. But that's why I said to you, I think on the Saturday, I was like, I just feel like I've been trolled because it's like it was just this series of like announcement of the new spotlight events. Then the terror Raid event uh, seven star returning covered those covered the home update. And then there was the issues with the the the, the spotlight terror Raid event. I covered that quickly. Then they pulled it. Then I did a video on that, and then Pokemon Home on top of it, and I was just like, what is, what is actually going on? It's just absolutely, like, you couldn't even write it. You couldn't make up that 24-hour period, I don't think, for such a big company. You know what? Tonight is actually going to be a really interesting night. So we're recording well, yeah. on, on Sunday. So unfortunately, yeah. we had to, we're going to have to record the pod on the weekend. So we're not going to know what's happening tonight what announcement they're going to make tonight right because normally we'd be getting a seven star raid right now yeah is that going to happen <laughs> who knows i don't know mate. Like, I, I, I actually don't, don't understand and the thing about this is it just seems so phony for them to be like oh it was a mistake it doesn't it doesn't like it feels like a lie but like at the same time i'm like why not just be transparent with people and say look because it, what it seems like is the game is broken again and they're like, fuck, we can't release home now. Like, because it might not work for whatever reason. I honestly don't think the issues with the raids have anything to do with um, home being delayed. I think you the think? issues with the spotlight raids are genuinely down to uh, the Pokemon materials. You know when you go into a raid and you beat a Pokemon and you get like the... Uh, items. You get like Mac Makuhita fur or whatever it is for that Pokemon. Uh -huh. Like if you beat a Hariyama. Well, the Paradox Pokemon don't have any Pokemon materials. So the non-slot is what what's being theorized is to be the slot where you would get these materials for that specific pokemon but because the paradox pokemon don't have any that's why it's shown up as non and then that's why it's crashing the game and it's obviously a template that they've got where they are just putting in the pokemon 
uh, to appear in the games and using the standard like spotlight template and then saying, okay, well, it goes live at this time, whatever, but they haven't checked that. And once the terror is live, I don't think it's editable. So that's why they've had to pull it all and they're going to have to do something to get around it. It was fine with Walking Wick and Iron Leaves because they're not registered in the Pokedex. So they, would, they wouldn't they would have had any materials anyway. Um, but the fact that these two Pokemon are registered in the Pokedex, they're kind of, there's obviously some glitch up where the game's pulling some sort of Pokemon material and there's just nothing to pull through. Interestingly enough, on this event, like you say, we'll be getting the announcement later tonight. We should be getting an announcement tonight about the next raid but they they did put a post out on the a japanese page where they said this event has been cancelled due to a problem we will inform you about a future response of this event such as the schedule of rescheduling at a later date we apologize for the inconvenience so in my mind i was like they're just going to bump it to the next weekend but i feel like they're going to just bung it in somewhere else down the line and i don't oh, think they were yeah, out. I don't think we're going to see it. Uh, Chestnut come back. The annoying thing for a lot of people, I think, as well, is because of Tears of the Kingdom dropping last week, a lot of people didn't take part in the Chestnut raid event because they were busy playing that, and they knew it was coming this weekend, so they were like, oh, I'll just get it the, the second weekend, and now this happens, and it's like... I read a, comments, a lot of comments that said that. Yeah. Mm, kind of frustrating. Ooh. It's such just a... Fall off, I just... fall off my chair. <laughs> <laughs> who knows man i mean i just i just don't i don't know i feel like our theory for when it uh, i feel like our terror raid theory with with the star park one i don't think it really makes sense anymore given what what's happened right based on if that was if we're really believing that that was a, that was a real tweet and that that was when it was meant to be you know dropped does like well like what we said like it was just was it just going to be random was there any plan at all like who knows i think there was a plan i think it goes even deeper than this and this this depends on how much you believe the information that riddler Koo puts out but i would peg my hat on most things that he puts out are legitimately real he's been fed information from somewhere and it's pretty reliable like he's got such a good track record uh going up to this point that i would say anything that he does put out he doesn't just put out lightly um and he put that that number 19 out and i honestly think when he got told that 19 that was going to be the date for when pokemon home should have been released because i think from everything that we've heard from him from or them and central leaks that home is ready to go like they've tested it it's ready to go for some reason something's come up and it's not ready to go yet and whether or not that's because they found something and they need to fix it or they just want to do some more thorough testing which is super fine but i think the initial date was the 19th and then they obviously bumped it a week later to around the 24th you think it was meant to be and the 19th then, of may i think not so June. May. i really do yeah and then i think i think our theory might make more sense to when we'll see a dlc trailer like when that you know originally when we said It'll be Del Fox next, which should be announced tonight. And I fully expect Del Fox to get announced tonight. And then it'll be Rillaboom, right? And then that four-week period will take us to mid-June, which will be around the 19th of June, I think. And that's when I think we were going to get a DLC trailer, which will explain why we've had these seven star raids and how these Pokemon will have specific new terraforms in the DLCs with these masks related to them somehow. And it's all these Pokemon are the ones that are going to get the, the new forms first. And that's why they've been fed in the seven star raids. But I don't know, mate. It's all just it's all just theory at the minute. And I think the home release date and these dates being banded around, like the 19th from Koo, the 24th, it was like, where's that come from? Like, if that's been miscommunicated, it's a pretty big miscommunication, you know, to like the the uk pokemon us pokemon i feel like, like surely it would get questioned as it gets passed down right like as we've discussed obviously this is a big thing or it has become yeah. a big thing because they haven't yeah. released it when they have so surely they'd want to get it right like surely there must be execs being like is this 
Is this real? Like, 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 is this actually like, are we announcing it now? There's no way they wouldn't check it. No way. There's no way like, that's they, what would, I mean. just, they would just be like, oh, the Japanese did it. Oh, well, we better do it then. The funny thing is the Japanese, like Twitter pages up and, and sites that were talking about it never mentioned a date. They didn't mention a, a single date. And you can go back through all of their tweets. There isn't a single date mentioned in Japan. There's just the information about the, the added features to Pokemon Home, like the move relearner that would we've got like the ability to switch between games when you're in Pokemon home that we haven't had before. Um, the backwards compatibility, the Roman gimme ghoul that you're going to trade in. That's like all information is on the Japanese like page of information, but there isn't a single place where it mentions a date, which is really interesting. It's only like the Western Pokemon companies that seem to have this date. But like you say, like, they can't do anything without the say so from Japan. So it's like that has come from somewhere. It's just like, how did that get, like, how did that get okayed if it was wrong? Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm totally with you. I just think it's like that was probably the date that they were planning on doing it. But then it's something's, something's went wrong. And I'm with you. I just think, like, just be transparent about it. Like, be transparent. If it, like, the thing is now, I think the problem is because they're not, we haven't got that transparency. We haven't got that trust with what they say to us is, do we believe that it is just a simple miscommunication, which it could be right. But I think we're all sat here questioning it and thinking, well, is it actually that, or is it something else? And it's such a bad look as well that you've got this issue with the spotlight terror happening in amongst it all, which just gives it an even worse look. And I think the lack of transparency along the way for the years that we, we've had that lack of transparency doesn't help the whole situation. So who knows? I think you're right. I think it's 100% the reason why we're questioning it right now. You know, it just goes back to anything, really. If you know someone and they just, they, you feel like they're hiding something or not hiding, but like they're holding stuff back. Mm. Which if it has felt like for a long time, Pokemon like to keep their cars close to their chest. I don't understand that, but... You can still do that and have, uh, you know, transparency with your audience. Um, as we mentioned before, I don't know if we mentioned this on the podcast, but I think the reason why Pokemon can afford to do this with the game and, you know, get away with it is because um, this isn't... The games aren't the, the, the main IP that makes them money, right? They have... With the Pokemon company, like, comparing it to Zelda, right... The Zelda franchise. The Zelda franchise, the main IP that they have that makes some money is the games. So, obviously, that's done incredibly well. The reviews are amazing. It runs amazing on the Switch. Surprise, surprise. You know, as a Skull and Violet should have. But, you know, if they screwed that up, they basically ruined the, the Zelda franchise. Whereas, they can screw up multiple facets of the Pokemon IP and it not make really a difference to them because they still have... They have the anime, they have the training card, they have the game, they have Unite, they have Pokemon Go, they have all all a handful of all the other merch they sell, the official merch that they sell, you know, and it's just like, and just the name as well, like, it's like one of those, it's such an iconic, like, Pokemon, like, most people know Pokemon, so it just, like, doesn't matter to them, so, like, why would they care as much when there's less, like, on the line for them, almost, and so you know the weird thing is i think they like generally baseline i think they do care i think the developers do care like i, I think I they do as well i think it's got to be the execs like, it has to be it, the execs they ruin it I, yeah and whether or not it's like pressure from nintendo on getting games out on a in a, in a, in a window for this system or if they've got like quarters where they've got to get so many games out for the switch in a, you know, a time frame I don't know what their contracts are. I, think, I don't think I, we'll ever know. But, I, it, it, you know, it, it, I think whatever pressures they've got are, are like haven't ever been more highlighted than they are currently with these games. Which is kind of sad because Scarlet and Violet, like on the, at the base of it, if you take away all the issues that Scarlet and Violet have had, actually really enjoyable games. And I think like still... One of my all-time favorite, like, the most enjoyable playthroughs I've had in a long time with a game. 
like I really love the game and it's just all these little things keep like chipping away at it and just like tarnishing it a bit more. I mean, they're the best, they're going to be the best selling Pokemon games of all time, pretty much, I think, eventually, you know. Um, and it's just like, shouldn't have all these issues. But I, I, I completely agree with you, mate. I think all the different fingers and different pies make it a bit easier to take hits with this sort of thing. Mm, I feel like for them to kind of remedy it, right? So I think there is probably, this, to a certain extent, this pressure to release a game you know they because they've done it for so long they've kind of you know forced their own hand a bit with having to release a game once a year or some something once a year and i feel like the only way to really remedy it is that they would have to basically just take they would have to take a couple of buffer years now if they wanted to fix it like mm. because they're in this cycle now right where they have constantly have to release something each year they there's no room for like error there like if they wanted to suddenly work on a game more so say say you know they want to spend an extra year on gen 10 that means we're not going to get something for one year so they need to take a break somewhere in order to do that and i think that was what they should do take a break and then reset how look at the structure of how they release games and just take a step back and be like okay let's just spend longer developing the games but then just obviously we're going to have to reduce the frequency that we release them or like still do it but you know we just need to make sure you have the time in between and okay yeah one year you might not get a pokemon game but you know loads of games you know how long has it taken for them to make gta 6 how long has gta 5 been out you know yeah. like i get it's pokemon, I, for zelda so and I, the fans don't complain yeah, about that's it that's what i mean like you, know? you get there's they as we said there are plenty of other things they could still do with their other ip um, Mate, we've got the perfect answer for them. The Legacy Collection and re-release the cards, re-release the Game they Boy could Advance, literally just whatever. do that. That would make so much do sense, that. right? It would fill such a gap, wouldn't it, man? Cling to the nostalgia. I, I'm joking a little bit, but it would be. You could no, do that it's a good idea, thing, right? Then. They could yeah. just do... Use the IP that they have. People wouldn't even be mad. People would not be mad, okay? There's the other thing as well, you know, like with like Battle Revolution, with Pokemon Stadium, with Coliseum, they're all like third-party developers as well. They weren't done by Game Freak. They were licensed out and developed by other companies. So like, you know, do something like that. Bring in Battle Simulator to the Switch. You know, like so many people would be like down for that as well. Those were like kind of nice games to play. I enjoyed every single one of those for different reasons. And I think... That could that could fill a fill a gap for a year, couldn't it? Between, you know, um, maybe if you are outsourcing like your your remake, if we've got like black and white coming supposedly this generation, then outsource that like you did with BDSP to Ilka. Do something similar, and outsource like a you know uh, a battle battle simulator as well, and do that, and that will fill enough time for you to have that extra space for you to. Do you magic? The Do thing is, as magic? well, I've just had this fault, and I guess it kind of makes a lot more sense. So talking mm. about, you know, how often they release stuff, I guess the problem with reducing how the frequency of new content is... So there are two ways to combat the problems, right? You either hire more people and make sure that they have the funds and stuff they need to make sure the games run, or you take time. Which is what they've, what a lot of developers do. It's just the normal thing. The problem with number one is obviously money, and they don't want to spend any money because you know they just don't want to spend money. The problem with the second one, I guess, and this is what I've just thought about: if you delay it, right? I know they have all this other IP, but the, everything kind of comes from the games almost. So, like, yeah. the anime is released alongside the games. The TCG sets are all based on... Again, you're right, you could do legacy TCG sets. You, there's loads of things they could do. But I think they they're... They've enough to do the legacy stuff now. You know, they've got enough back But, again, they, they've just forced their own hand in the sense... They've screwed themselves, basically. Mm. Because, like I said, they're so reliant on this content from the games that also funnel the ideas for the other IP, like the trading card, like the anime, like all their plushies and all this constant thing that feeds them like this incessant amount of money 
to, for this pool that they have. Like it just yeah. uh, the, the baseline is always the they game, need to just it? restructure it. Like like I say, well, when we've had conversations in the past about like the video, them stop making the video game, they'll never stop making it really because that is what most things are based off of. Like the anime, like most people won't watch the Pokemon anime. Like I understand that airs on TV, but most people get their knowledge of Pokemon. Like the games are way more accessible than, than anime. Like I've, I've, I haven't watched most, I've gone through stents of watching large amounts of like the Pokemon anime, but you know, you're to get that larger audience. It has to be done through the video game. And mm. so it's always going to be at the core of the franchise. So if you change, start changing that, then you're going to start affecting the other parts of the IP. Um, and I think that is probably one of the reasons why, as we just said, they haven't delayed the release cycle of stuff. They just need to focus on maybe just like, I don't know, just like hiring more devs, giving them more money, you know, just restructuring, just thinking about it. Um, yeah. You've, you've nailed it yeah that's that is the issue isn't it because the only other option with them would be do you know legacy collection like one or more spin-off stuff of stuff they've done in the past they could cling to nostalgia which wouldn't be a problem for only did it well which i'm yeah. sure they could do as we've seen with that um what's that that tcg collectors like box yeah. thing that they're doing you know People will always gem one. They could do anything with gem one. People will love it. They could do stuff like that. They've, like you said, they have such a excessive backlog of cat, like back catalog of games that they could do. Even if, say, for like the black and white stuff, for example. I know we haven't had the remake for for that yet, but they could still do black and white stuff for that. You know, like I said, they could just do legacy collections for all the stuff. They could do a whole legacy collection for TCG. You know, you know, they could just rock it back to like the old cards, you know, just like they could mix it up. But as we've said, it's a bit like coming back to the whole tournament structure of like the competitive events is that I understand that we are probably slightly naive. Like there's obviously the problem with a lot of the larger companies. I was actually talking to my friend about this today is the, the larger the company gets, the more things have to filter through like all these execs that it has to still have stuff have to be approved by when you've got someone at the top that doesn't really understand the core game and its value um you know it's never going to reflect in the ip and what they're doing because they're only going to be yeah. thinking about how can we make more money okay we need to release something every year when with the smaller that, devs teams thing. and that's probably why they're not as transparent right for that yeah. reason, because when you've got a smaller dev team, you can go home and just be like, you know, this is what it is, this is what I'm doing. But because stuff has to be approved by so many people, you're stuck in this sort of vicious loop of, we can't really say anything because we need like 100 people to approve it. And we can't mm. change the way, the structure of, because it's like the whole foundation of the Pokemon company is built on this release cycle of the of the games. Like it, it's more tightly intertwined than than we, than sort of we all think, and it's probably why you no know, part of the course, part of the course, why they've been so successful. And you can't knock that, yeah. but it's just getting to a point now where, obviously, you get the most of the people complaining, right? Aren't the majority player base? This is the thing: the people that complain online aren't the majority player base base for most games, because most people will just play stuff without complaining. Like I get people. People will still moan about problems, and it's fine to moan about problems, but most of the people playing Scarlet and Violet are kids. As we've mentioned in the past, they don't give a monkeys about what's going on. They don't care. They're still going to... Little Timmy's still going to go and ask his parents to buy loads of Pokemon cards. You know, ask him to buy plushies. Good old Timmy. It doesn't, like... <laughs> realistically, like, the people that care aren't the core audience for Pokemon... You know, yeah. you can see it with the games. Like, these games are clearly targeted towards children and becoming more and more like that. You know, especially with the characters are basically, you know, they've always been children, but this game feels like it's very much yeah. emphasis of, like, they're, like, almost like um, primary school kids, you know? Like, well, they are, um, but, you know, it just feels like, it really feels like it's for children now. Like, and that's not necessarily a problem because, as we've mentioned, like, the games are still amazing. But, you know, it's just 
doesn't take away from the frustration of being a fan because, you know, they have to... Because what they do really well is hold on, to, as we mentioned, with the nostalgia. They hold on to people who like who play Pokemon in their childhood, right? And they always manage to claw you back. Like when Pokemon Go come out, right? I bet the only reason a lot of people play Pokemon Go is because they probably played Pokemon to some extent when they were younger, mm. right? Because it's been out for long enough now that, you know, people know. Like, it's obviously it's a massive IP, but, you know, there's there's good... There's, like, generational gaps where people have played, like... You know, it spans up like when like a long time basically. Like they've been coming out for like twenty years now, just over like twenty five years, just over twenty five years of the Pokemon games. So, you know, they have that nostalgia, but you don't want to start losing the people that the older fans because they're still going to play. You want to keep those because you know because yeah. it's only going to help grow your fan base. I have to disagree with you in it on one thing though. I don't really feel like Scarlet and Violet was more more a kids game than than probably some of the other Pokemon games. I think like face value a kid can pick it up and play it for sure. But I think the inner workings of of the game are way more targeted to an older demographic. Especially when you're looking at like um terror the raids. mechanics, the terror raids, mm-hmm. IVs, EVs. Like we've said, you know, they made some big improvements to hyper training, being able to quickly train up your Pokemon, level them up as well with the, the accessibility through Excel candies and stuff like that. So I think the inner workings, complexities of the game itself, they're not targeted to kids, right? The the longevity of the game, the the, the playability kind of coming back to it and playing it more and more the shiny hunting and things like that it's not aimed at that young audience i think they have a really fine balancing act to play it where it has to be really accessible for kids because they're the next generation they're important for their the future of the growth of the company but they still have to appeal to that demographic that's aging with the franchise as well and i think they do it really well i think there's some things that they could do better but i mean what what can you not kind of apply that to in any kind of game uh, scenario, you know? But that's just my, my, no, no, my take that, on it. That is a I good, totally that is appreciate a good point. your opinion on it. But I just think, you know, I think like it is, I think there's a fine balance between what demographic it's, it's aimed for. And I think they do it really well. Like in my opinion, I think they do it really well. But then but it, getting back it, to a point. It does worry you, sorry to interrupt. Uh, like, that's right. They, they're stumbling on the stuff that they used to do really well or have done really well for a while so it worries you like what though? well like the game optimization the games have always oh, right. okay. run well for the consoles that they have yeah but for the most part they've been like 2D not open world yeah, but their that's job's not, been a lot easier it's not really an excuse though when you have games like Zelda and also the, the BDSP rolls out very recently and uh, that had many a glitch many a glitch i guess so all stemming from the same glitches that you got in the uh the the base games really interesting you know so um like the yeah. authentic so experience the, it was very authentic they patched them very quickly you gotta take your hats off to them because i mean it was like a glitch came out a week later it was patched and then that cycle went on for i'd say i want to say like six weeks that went on and on for where it was like Oh, we found a new way to do it, and then that gets patched. Another new way to do it, that gets patched. It went on. So I think there's been, like, obviously throughout the franchise, there's been issues with glitches. I just don't think there's been as... I think it's worse in these games because of how popular they're on, how many players are actually, you know, still playing the games and experiencing these issues. And then there's been some real detrimental issues, like the save data glitch, where people's save data was getting erased. I think that's kind of that's where the line gets drawn and you kind of have to sit up at that point and be like, okay, like it's kind of funny seeing like a duplication glitch come out that got patched. But they're not but like, when they're not starts... game breaking glitches, are they? So you don't no, mind. But when it starts affecting like the actual player's experience, I think, oh, come on, that's not, that's not cool. Or the random great game crashes, the, the performance of the games as well is noticeably bad. Like the frame rate just drops and just other things like there's just some like the performance, like you say, is not, it's not brilliant, is it? 
so yeah so what you're gonna say you literally gonna say something when i interrupted you i was gonna go back to your point about how it feeds down through all of these different levels and you've got to go from japan which controls everything and everything has to be okayed by japan and it's going to be fed over to um tpci in america and then that feeds everywhere else pretty much right so you've got to jump through a bunch of hoops to get anything signed off by anyone before anything's officially like released okay so there are a little a lot of issues but it goes with the same and i know this uh, firsthand from uh, the the competitive scene and the issues that they have in the competitive scene which not really like the player base don't know about like this season for instance there have been issues with the the championship points right and how um players are like well we've only got half a season how are we going to get this many championship points to get to worlds um and we can't get to events because the capacity for the events that we we're trying to get to the, the 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 there's no capacity we can't get tickets tickets are gone in minutes so we can't even attend to get our championship points so there's been this whole issue right but you've got to remember that play pokemon are planning these events the year before like a year before right so they need the schedule mapped out a year before and they need to be able to predict what they they, they think the attendance for events is going to be that next year round okay it's the average the average attendance for these events so they can hire halls uh hire spaces and things like that logistically because they can't hire they can't hire the excel say for a uk regional right if you're going off numbers from sword and shield because regionals for sword and shield you were looking at max 200 players per regional right you there's no way they had the foresight to say that was going to be like times five right going into regionals for scarlet and violet so then with that happening not just on one occasion but like across the board right and then you're thinking right well how are we going to manage the championship points for that and that was all decided a year before and you can't really adjust it at the time and that's what i mean like that they, they have such a hard job but mm. because of the keeping the cards close to their chest not being transparent because for the most part you know probably a lot of the employees would be like can we just say something? Can we just put something out to explain the situation, why it is like it is? But because they don't want to put things out that could potentially damage the brand or anything, then it leads to just speculation, you know? And that is where the problem lies. And I think it, that applies across the board. That same situation that's happening in competitive Pokemon with this the the circuit structure and that, I could go on about that for a, a no, lot more. No, I, I think you're right. A lot I think... more depth. But I think the same situation applies right the way through. You know everything. Um, but again, it comes back to because they've given themselves such a stringent and tight release schedule, they don't have any rooms to repair problems. Yeah, that's so. True. Like I do appreciate the fact that you know stuff is probably planned. You know. They've probably planned out the next two generations of Pokemon. They probably know what they're, what they're going to do, what the gimmicks are. Well, they always say, don't they? They always say that they they have two. They kind of work alongside each other, don't they? They're working on two at the same time. So when um, Scarlet and Violet launch, they'd be heavily in already in development of Gen 10. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how how it works. Yeah, no, that that makes sense. Or the concept, at least, will be there. The concept for Gen 10 would be there for them to start, you know, putting together. I don't know exactly how it works. They just they just don't have the wiggle room to remedy issues. That's, that is just the problem. No, no. Like I said, you know, with all the stuff of Pokemon Home and the Terror Raids, you know, I, I, I do to an extent believe they are independent, but I do think that it's definitely affecting it, their decisions. Yeah. But it show it just shows, doesn't it? Like the the tiniest little hiccups that, that they have along the way with this really stringent time timeline that they've got. It really impacts everything else. Mm. Like were we originally meant to get like the teal mask, the DLC part one? Were we meant to get that in the same timeline, similar timeline to when we got Isle of Armor, like June this year? Were we meant to get that? Was Home meant to come out in like February this year? But because of all the issues that they had with the game before that, you know, trying to fix, bring out new patches to fix things, 
has it all just been moved back and then you get these added little annoyances with like the spotlight terror aid event things that were maybe overlooked with the the, the pokemon materials is that adding to resources being taken away from one thing and going into that and then it's all just pushed back and pushed back and they're just constantly in this chaos mode of trying to play catch up with everything i don't know mate no it's yeah i am trying to throw them a bone here i do really like i do want to give them the benefit of the doubt with everything but it's hard to and like I'm, I'm but it comes back everything. to the lack of transparency yeah you can forgive really... a lot of it if they were just like look this is what's happening this is the reason i feel like i feel like everyone would be or the majority of the player base would be super understanding and super accepting if we just had that transparency about stuff and we would be like fair enough if that is what the case is like no one really minds waiting as long as we just know the situation but it's the fact that you've got that kind of lack of transparency and like i've mentioned i'm like a broken record here but it is just speculation then you speculate and like speculation is speculation is actually work, can be really yeah. dangerous yeah you know this uh, like this is a really weird tangent but i was talking about like one of the linus tech tips has this channel and they were talking about how like you know whenever there's mystery it can cause problems like i said as speculations because people become more intrigued and they want to know stuff and like for example like their offices they have their offices are based in vancouver and they like years ago they just announced where they're like where, they're, where their actual offices are and they said it's like one of the best things they ever did because we don't have this like mystery of people trying to hunt us down and work out where we work people just know where we are and uh, you know it, it sort of just all comes back to the sense of like when there's mystery okay mystery mystery can be cool but you know it it can cause a lot of problems because you know people start asking loads of questions and then you know and then rumors spread as well right as we mm. mentioned you know like why like we're speculating now right why is all this happening and you know like i said we could we're probably being very naive or at least i know you're trying to play devil's advocate here and we're trying to understand but you know there are probably loads of things we don't understand and that we'll never be able to because we don't run a company that's as huge as Pokemon, you know? So it's just it's just yeah. frustrating. I mean, you mentioned you had something interesting you noticed noticed about the DLC dates, didn't you? On on the store. I don't know if you wanted to mention that quickly. Well well we can talk about it. Now I don't know if I'm just looking into this and the dates haven't changed from the original, but I feel like the date from the tail mask and I can't find anything online to kind of back my my little brain up in this situation, but I feel like the the initial date for the tail mask was not the date that's showing on um, the eShop right now. I'll just pull it up. My screen might look a little bit wonky for a minute, but we'll be all right. So this is not what um, I wanted. This is what I wanted. These were the dates that we got and the Pokemon Presents. They weren't dates. They were just rough time frames. So fall 2023 winter 2023 so fall is normally between like october well no september october november is fall right and then winter is december january february but if we're looking at winter 2023 then that is going to be december right but if we hop over to the e-shop and we look at the release dates here now please correct me if you're on youtube and you can leave a comment and you can back back me up on this not back me up that i'm right but just correct me that these dates have not changed then that would be great but if there has been any discrepancy with the teal mask date in particular that's the one i think that i i never remembered it being the 31st of the 12th 2023 and then obviously the indigo disc is like pegged for like uh april, april you know 30th of april 2024 so they're they're way off i know these could be and they do it sometimes where the dates on the uh the e-shop the the release dates are just kind of placeholder dates that they give you just as a, a kind of like just to give them room if if needed but the the reason why i brought it up to you before the pod was because i couldn't remember whether or not the teal mask date on the eShop was sooner than that and i feel like it wasn't december but i feel like it was a bit sooner than december but i mean 
Imagine if they are those actual dates, though. They were the dates that were going to get these games, you know. I can't imagine 31st of December being a date that a game gets dropped. That seems a bit unrealistic. But if it is, like, December for the first DLC, that is a long way off, man. That is a long way off. And that is not fall. Yeah, but are, are we then hypocrites of being like, we need to give them more time to develop stuff, but then get angry if they delay the DLC? But come out and say it. Just come out and say we need more time to yeah. do this. Yeah. I think that's like there's no. I think transparency if you're back out to there, transparency. Yeah, it's like there's no problem with it. But just come out and say we need to. Well, there's a few issues we haven't sorted out yet. I mean, like the Japanese Twitter page. You know, they put tweets out saying that there were a few things they were working on with Pokemon Home. The date got miscommunicated, which is fine. They've said that. Like, they want to get things right for it, which is super fine. But the fact is that, you know, they put those dates out in the first place. And it is a mistake, right? And everyone makes mistakes 100%. So it's super fine. But I think the fact is that there's so much anticipation, again, for the Teal Mask and Indigo Disc. And they've had this huge bunch of time since it was announced that they are coming out to now to say something about these are going to be a bit later than what we planned, you know? And don't leave it till the last minute. Don't leave it till like, you know, don't leave it till September to say, oh, by the way. Yeah. Because like they'll know now if it's going to be ready oh, for... Oh, 100%. Do you know what I mean? I just think just come out and say it, you know. I think that's what would make it fine. And I don't think anyone would have a problem if they were late. And I don't think we're being hypocritical about it. I just think it's the fact that We've been given time frames, rough time frames, and if they're not on those time frames, and you've seen what's happened early 2023, Nelly and June, that is not early 2023. Nelly and June. Anyone's world. There is wriggle room for a, a bunch of months that you could put that into and say, ah, maybe. But June is definitely <laughs> June's not 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 any part of early. Yeah. I 100% agree oh, with you. Like, I don't know, mate. Yeah. They're going to cause a lot of problems if they don't say anything till September and be like, oh, it's December now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Merry Christmas. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. Like, it's hurting my brain a little bit. Like, us, yeah, us going for, like, detective trying to work out what is going on here. But uh, I think, yeah, just see what they come out with and hope that, you know. Uh, I, I, everything will work out I'd rather they took way longer with the DLCs to come out and just polished everything up to fix all of the issues in the base games to make sure the DLCs are a really nice finished article that runs smooth, they don't have any issues with them sure mistakes can be made here and there but in, if, on the face value of it if they just run really nicely and we don't have any like game breaking issues in them, I think take as long as you need to, get them out make this game like do scarlet and violet justice i won't mind and i'm sure a lot of other people kind of agree with me on that point as well 100 percent, 100 percent. you know i think i can't really I think... think pokemon home fills a gap as well you know because we're going to have access to like all these Asuya and pokemon all the other pokemon that you can transfer and there's going to be like a hundred and something pokemon that are going to be transferable as soon as pokemon home's available so it fills a bit of time for players, you know, to get them into Scarlet and Violet, do what they want in the game with them, be it competitive, be it breeding shinies, doing other things, whatever. And sorry to cut you off there. That was just... No, no, I think, to be honest, I think my head's kind of fried because I feel like we've just gone so balls deep into that. Um, I don't really think yeah. there's anything else possibly to mention. Not really. I thought we were done with the Pokemon Home conversation. I thought this this episode I was looking forward to and being like, we can say it's coming this week and then we don't need to talk about it anymore. <laughs> but it's like, because we talked about it last episode and we were like, we're just saying the same things over and over again. And we're back to this old barbecue again. So one more time round, I think. But Third yeah, I know what you mean. Charm. Mm. Third time. Third time is the charm. I'm going to because I did get something this week. I've been talking about it. If we want to, if we got, if we finished on that, this is a yeah, nice Yeah, let's just end it there. Let's talk about some happy stuff. So I did, I did get, I did get this this week, which I'm 
That's so awesome, man. About, That's so, so awesome. happy about. So happy about. It. So this was this is, um, very very nice to get, which I'm like, still haven't played it yet. I'm waiting. You can open it. Will... Or you're gonna leave it. No, it's it, it's not sealed, mate. Oh, okay. Man, if it was sealed, I would not be oh, opening it. I thought it, it was mate. sealed, man. I was what? like, what? Oh, mate. No, 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 no. It's not sealed. There's no way I'd get a sealed copy. It's in a nice, like, protective case, though. Um, and the game's in there and all sorts. So, but no, it is secondhand. But I, I kind of, I really want to boot it up in case there's a, a save file on there. But I believe it's had a new battery fitted, so it should be all fine, which is really cool. And you've got the game just sitting, sitting in here. And then there we go. Look at that bad boy. Can't wait to pop it in and play it. So I've got a few trips coming up soon. So I will be keeping it for when I uh, when I go there. I really want to. Um, I really want to stream it though. That's the thing on the channel. And I have ordered Order myself it. an analog. You have pocket. done it. Let's go. This. But I have no idea when it's going to arrive. And the more I've dug into that and finding out about when that will be getting shipped is another matter it will still probably be before before the dlc jobs that's my guess i don't know mate it's you gonna be think? interesting you don't think i, I don't know we'll have to wait they and did see three waves they did three waves on releasing and for those that you weren't aren't viewing on youtube and listening that was a copy of pokemon emerald boxed um that i i've just i got last week so that's why i'm really excited and uh, i should have explained that at the time uh, yeah, but the analog pocket, uh, amazing system. Really excited about getting it. It plays like uh, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, uh, Game Boy Advance, and it's got the ability to have all of these different cores now. They've, they've been able to integrate software into it now where you're going to be able to get all these different cores, which are essentially just different systems that can play on it. So you can sideload ROMs into it. Mm -hmm. So they've got like the, the snares on there. They've got the mega drive on there. And there's some guy in Japan who's just figured out how to, um, sideload the ps1 core onto it. So you can play ps1 what? games on this thing. My, that, is so that will probably be sick. like, it's like absolutely nuts, man. Um, so, the idea was to get it so I could stream like from cartridge rather than ROMs uh, like some of the old games on the channel. And that's what I was kind of going to save Emerald for. But knowing that this is going to come probably not for a while, uh, I probably will stop playing it before then because I don't know if I can hold off that long, to be honest. But it's an amazing console. Amazing. That is awesome. Yeah. Because the dock has a HDMI out on it, so I can plug it straight into a capture card and then can, can record, you know, playing actual software. And it's not emulated software like a lot of the other, like, um, you know, replica handheld consoles are. It's using, like, the, the chip in it actually emulates the original, like, software, uh, hardware, sorry. So it plays the game, like, actual hardware, how it's meant to be played. On just a better screen yeah or so you can play really... it on like an original screen yeah yeah, like, yeah. it's got loads of different settings as well so yeah really nice awesome. screen as well yeah. awesome very so, cool very excited about that but like i say it was it's been it got launched in three waves there was a b and c and they're on to c now but i know people i've read that people like ordered in like 2021 pre-ordered it in 2021 who were put into the C wave and they're still waiting now for it so we'll have to wait yeah. and see it does say pre-orders for C the C uh, group will get shipped in 2023 but we'll see as we as we know with Pokemon see, yeah. may but the thing is like you have to like if you want one I think pre-order it because you won't get because, one otherwise because if once they stop that pre-ordering like it will be sold out and they will not be making any more after this point so they they do limited runs on stuff so if you miss out on them the only way to get them after that is on the second hand market and you can imagine the prices of these things like already so cool cool Worth sure. it. got that yeah Show sorry me. that was just a total tangent no it was good um it i've got a few good. things from scott's yes. rocket game corner today <laughs> um, Scott's Rocket Game Corner. 
Um, I feel like we should make a little song about that. I should get a bust out the acoustic and uh, create a little track for this. <laughs> let's, let's not get too carried away. A little jingle. Hey, man. Hey, man. It could be good. So, like the Concord style. My business sucks. So, so I've only got a few oh, things. Yeah. Nothing crazy <laughs> this week. The craziest Nothing thing crazy. I, I found was... Now, bet yourself for this, because this could be terrifying or also awesome. So, you know, you, you need business to prepare time. yourself. So okay. I found these outdoor Pokemon playground, and um, I mean, <laughs> I don't really know what to say. I don't know if that's terrifying or that or, 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 or what, but yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> For those of you that aren't listening, I'll try my best to describe this um, play park. There is only like two items I can see in this play park that you could play on. There is a Chansey, which looks like it's on like a spring, right? A rocking I don't know horse, if it is. rocking kind of. Like a rocking horse Chansey, which looks kind of innocent and cool. And then in front of it is this huge liquor tongue slide. And uh, the tongue is the slide <laughs> and the liquor tongue is <laughs> just kind of perched over with its mouth open. And that's that's where you come out of and it looks... <laughs> it looks something and the stairs i'm assuming are you go into the rear end of the oh. liquor tongue and uh, go <laughs> go up the slide didn't even then, think about that yeah. that is brutal because <laughs> it's not that there's no steps so the steps must be inside the liquor tongue right and you go in from the the tail end right it's too much it's too so much it's like a re it's a reverse birth oh <laughs> oh bro it's uh <laughs> yeah I can't believe that. Uh, that's that's pretty epic. Yeah. I don't know if that's like. Oh, is there any? Was there any other pictures of the park, or were these the only two items that were in there? No, this. Yeah. Oh. The comments are like, "Where is this? I need to know where it is." No, like this is it. Where where'd you go in? Quick answer: the tail. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, tail. Bro. Mate, you've done well. You've done well. You've you've really what done. What is this? Well. What is what? that? I oh didn't my... know. I did not know this was here. What the <laughs> hell? For those that of you listening, insane. you need to come and look at the the bloody video, man. There's a giant chansey in the middle of this playground, just in front of this weird lick tongue slide. There is a massive, like I'm talking, like almost house, small house sized chansey with slides coming huge. out of the sides. How do I you mean, even get into that? Do you crawl underneath? There it? must be another. Again, probably through the rear end. Like, what the fuck? Is there any more pictures? Let's have a look. See if there's anything Come else on. in the comments. There's got to be more to this. Where is I need this? To... As well, I will find out more about this mysterious, this mysterious part. <laughs> this can't be the only one, or if this is like a unique only, only one that they've ever made. This is pretty ma a pretty magical place. Let me just see if I can find it quickly. That is. This is a special. This is a special thing. I'm pleased you've introduced me to this. Okay, so it is a place. Massive. Oh wow! Kuriyama Kazayan Park. I'm assuming it's in Japan, and it seems to be Chansey themed, or at least Pink Pokemon themed. Because, I mean, this Chansey yeah, is this. huge. It is so big. It is like the size of a house, like a two-story house for sure. Like. It's massive. What okay, so this is, the, this is the other side of wow. it. Wow. Oh, that looks awesome, doesn't it? Imagine, like, imagine coming across that as a kid. Bro, that just what is this, epic. bro? That is so cool. That is so that is freaking awesome. cool. Japanese once again outdoing themselves. Outdoing themselves. Play parks. Just doing it better than the rest. Right, so I only had one other thing, which isn't going to top that. Um, that was that was amazing, mate. Just I just thought this was just funny because I don't know okay. why, like I don't know why you'd want to get. So this is a TCG related product, and obviously yeah. we've discussed in the past like one of the best ways to display stuff is to get it graded because it's a nice slab, right? You can get mm -hmm. the stands; they look cool. Um, there aren't really, you know, you can put it in like a top loader and stuff, but it's not the best, should we say? It doesn't look the best. So you can get cars graded, and someone's had the Charizard graded, and I don't understand why they've had the Charizard graded, to be honest with you, because <laughs> it's so bad that they haven't even given it a grade. That's how bad <laughs> this is. Oh, my God. Like, 
it has not, scratches on the front. Like, why bother getting like, unless it has like mad sentimental value. Like, why? It is a shadowless. It is a shadowless. Yes, God, but they haven't you, even uh, bothered giving it a, a grade. No, it is very unique in that sense, though, isn't it? I mean, it's absolutely destroyed. For those of you that are listening, it looks like someone's got a knife and just went at the the, the hollow of the card and repeatedly kind of sliced down or just scraped at the front or a key or something. What you do with a key when you're like <laughs> grinding on something, it looks like that's what they've done to the hollow. And then they've sent the Shadowless Charizard off to get graded and it doesn't look nice, does it, mate? It's kind no, of sad to see. That no, that it's is very the sad to see. But, you know, that is, it that probably is has sentimental wear and tear. So. That has not been put in a box and that's just nope. happened. Someone's gone at that with something. Someone has absolutely destroyed that thing. Oh, could you imagine? Could you imagine if that was your card and you came in and, like, you, you just, like, some little... I imagine it's been, like, I'm just making assumptions here. Some toddler... Has just got a hold of it. Oh, right. Just... You did this when you were a child, right? And so you had this oh, realization, even right? Worse. Pokemon cards are booming, right? Oh my god, I have a shadowless Charizard, right? You run upstairs into your loft, you get up into your loft, you pull the binder down, you open it up, and this is the state of your Charizard, and you're like, why did I do this? I remember doing that for a laugh with the lads. Because <laughs> I was, I had a, yeah, I'm hypothetically making a scenario here where. I was battling my friend who had. I was battling my friend Phil who had a Blastoise, and we. I had a Charizard, and Phil beat me. So, to to make it look like the battle was real, I scratched <laughs> out the hollow on my Charizard. <laughs> battle, and I have this battle, battle horrific scars. memory of it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, traumatic bro. memory of it. Uh, it is a very unique card, though. So you know, I bet there's not another one like that. Nope. There nope. is that to it. But no, that's that's pretty much it for today. We have some big news, though. Um, did you have something? Did I see something about Mew that you had? I did, but I don't know how interesting it is. I'll put it back up again quickly. Because... Put it up. I'm interested about it, so hopefully the, the, um, the me... listeners and the viewers okay. are. So, so, do you know... Let me find Scott wants to end this, do, and I'm do, just do, dragging do, it on. Where am I saved post? Okay, right. Uh, mm, mm, mm. So, it was from do you know... One, wasn't it? Do you, have you heard of... Hmm. Uh... Pokemon 99, the Pokemon 99 tour. Mm -hmm. So basically, this guy... I went to it. This guy has... He found his old games. Mm -hmm. All the Pokemon are gone, except for two Mews from the Pokemon 99 tour that are on... that were transferred by Nintendo, and he just has them left on his cartridges. Really? And so he's, like, wondering, like, how rare they are. Very stuff. rare. Very rare. I don't know how we can tell from this. Maybe the name, the OT name. What was that? Linky and Luigi? Huh, I don't know. I I, I wasn't the t the 1999 tour, so this is way before when I got Mew. I got Mew on my bread from the 2001 championship tour. They give out Mew at that event. Pokemon Bank apparently wouldn't work since it detects any Mew that isn't from the VC events. Wow. Okay. So, so they're stuck on this poor co copy of red. Ah, oh, that is that is so annoying when they're like an official. Because how they used to do it would be from a they transfer from like an, another Game Boy and they'd hook up with you, like old school, and they transfer you the to the link cable, the mm. the event Pokemon. Pretty cool. I remember like Toys R Us and stuff. It's pretty cool. Yeah. I remember the trying to look up. They used to do. Brilliant. I was always look up when I was younger. When I when I got into Pokemon and had Diamond and Pearl, I was constantly trying to look up, like are they doing any distribution events and stuff. So, I got um, some stories about places I went to get like. I will save it. I will save Pokemon. it for another. For save another it for another one. Yeah, I went on some mad journeys, to uh to the to back end of nowhere to these random events that I didn't even know existed that were like little village events that we're doing sometimes got some stories we'll touch on it another week but yes very cool good old days so back to the back news to oh yeah before Lee dragged this out for another hour you know Sorry. although it's been good it's been a good episode um the channel the pod is moving to its own channel next week 
Yeah. So episode 10 will be on its own channel. The Pokeballs podcast. No, yeah. Or Pokeballs podcast, as it's named. Um, so go subscribe now. The next episode will be up on there. We may have a guest. Um, or we could do it live. I've just had the thought we could possibly do it live. But probably not. Oh, we do. We'll see. It depends on how many subs we... Maybe, maybe we'll save the live once we more people know that it's there. But it's moving yeah. over now, so it will not be on Lee's channel. It will not be on Osiris this coming week, the following week. Um. So yeah. So is is the channel is live now? There's no videos on it yet, but um. Obviously, we're gonna start posting. I've got a bunch of shorts I will be posting on there as well from clips of all the episodes we've done already. Um. But no please go subscribe and obviously if you're listening on spotify and have a podcast i know you're listening okay please leave please leave a review man like we're gonna keep begging until someone does it we're gonna keep begging now where i'm like what am i gonna give away what am i gonna do a giveaway for to get someone to leave leave one review review on one review on spotify let me just check to see uh, see if we've got any costa we spoke to you we know you're out there we know that we spoke to you about this to do us a solid. Yeah, Costa, what's haven't. going on? If you're listening, Costa, <laughs> and Terence, Terence, if you're listening as well, please leave us a review, man. For the rest of you, we know you're listening, so we would we would appreciate it. But I'm getting to the point now where I'm like, okay, I've got some pretty rare plushies. No rating still. That, uh, I know, right, right. That I could I could put up, and whoever leaves a review on there. Is going into a draw for let's say like a, uh, the exclusive Pikachu plush from Worlds London last year. That's what we'll do, okay? And what? we'll announce it on the new channel. You know the Pikachu plush from yeah, Worlds yeah. last year. Uh-huh. I've got a spare one of those. We could put that up as a as a as a as a. We'll do a draw. But you can't you can't you can't contact. There's no way to know. Spotify will just you might have a username, that's it. There's no way to prove that um it is what it is. You shouldn't have told me that and then we could have just done that and got a bunch of reviews and then oh, at the end of it we could have been like, Oh well we can't find out who's oh, done the no. anyway, so <laughs> No, we need to shout out New Zealand, okay. So I got this random email from this guy. Obviously trying to, there are loads of ways to track your podcast, right? Loads of websites and there's this website that does it. They're obviously trying to promote it because you have to pay like a five a month for it to work. But in the email, he said that we, our podcast is somehow number seven in the video game category in New Zealand. Uh, how? We love you, New Zealand. We love we love you, but G'day, is mate. it just like four people? Oh, what is going on? Like, how has this happened? But uh, yeah, because I mean, I see right. it on. You can see the demographic on there. Like see some you. people. We see you. We have some interesting demographic for, excuse me, um, for, you know, our audience. Uh, but New Zealand, 2% of our viewers are apparently from New Zealand. Um, so, but yeah, no, we have amazing someone from Oman, Mali, these countries I've never heard of before. Austria, Canada. You, Australia. You of Austria, yeah, no, you? I understand that. But I'm just listing the other countries. I'm not that stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's we we really do appreciate everyone listening to it. Like last week's no, we episode we is at 39 plays now. Wow, that's banging. the most we've had on Spotify so far. Yeah, thank you so much to everyone that is supporting. We have the, seven, um, 27. It's a lot of fun doing followers this. as well. It's like I will on the channel put a community post out just to let everyone know that the we'll remind you a couple times. Over, and I will link it as well. So if you want an easy way to find, keep an eye out for that community post, and it will be linked. And I will be linking everything in the previous stuff that's on the channel to the new channel, um, and it will be yep yeah, where hatching the Pokeballs podcast and it's going off on its own and uh, moving away from the Osiris channel but it's been a nice little journey to kind of just give us a little I can't believe we're almost on episode 10 already I know it's like two and a half months worth of podcast it's amazing it's to another two and a half months it'll be interesting to see where we are this time next year two DLCs out yeah okay we'll see yeah we'll see two DLCs out compatibility Pokemon Home completely Black. breaks the game. Black and white two remakes on the way. Don't 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 tear up my heart. Excitement. Dreams. Yeah, it's gonna be good. And then getting close to a Gen 10 announcement. Yep. 
we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see, baby. But you know, here's to another two and a half. Two and a half, my dude. It's obviously loads of fun. Um, but yeah, no, I think that's pretty much it for this week. Have you got anything else you would like to say before we say goodbye? No. Nothing. Nothing, baby. That's it. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. It's been a pleasure. You've been great. You're beautiful. Thanks for listening. And we'll see you all on the next one. Hopefully we've got a bit more better news yeah. uh, than what we've been um, wrangling in today's episode. Excellent. Goodbye, guys. See you later. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day. Wake up. Today's going to be a good day.